Welcome back. This is Victoria Wolders, your Empathy Tales podcast host. And today I get to share with you another Empathy Tales story from the Oak and Eagle Kingdom. If you are new to our Empathy Tales podcast, I am a mother and an elementary school teacher, and I create stories that allow people and our listeners to be able to think about different types of virtues. I am an educational storyteller, and this is my podcast and and a and gift to be able to share the stories that I've shared with my own kids to the world, all of them centering around mindfulness, compassion, and empathy. Well, today's story, The Ant and the Eagle, is a wonderful one. This one actually is based on perspective taking. Um, it came from actually a real life um, story that I was part of in regards to taking perspectives on different situations. And so the ant has a perspective of of a certain thing and the eagle has a perspective of a certain thing. Now, they both come from different places. The ant comes from the ground and the eagle comes from the sky. So maybe today you might be able to think about a situation you're in where you think that you're perceiving it a certain way. And maybe if you empathize and think about how another person is perceiving the situation, you might be able to be more at peace because the ant would see um, a shoe as being huge, but yet the eagle would think of a shoe as being very small. So today's quote is, the ant and the eagle had two different perspectives, but they both were able to help. Okay, well, with that, I'll let you listen to the story, and I hope that you're sitting all comfortable. Now, I will begin. Okay, so this is episode 64, The Ant and the Eel. And today is Sunday, September 22nd, 2019. Once upon a time, a long time ago, in the land of the Oak and Eagle Kingdom, in the land of the Western Eagle, there was a royal family. There was a king, a queen, and their son, Prince, Prince George. The king and queen were lovely people, and they had hectares and hectares of land that spanned across the land of the Western Eagle. What was so amazing about this land that they owned was it was filled with different types of gardens. There was a butterfly garden. There was a a vegetable garden. There was an orchard. There was a spider web garden. (laughs) There was a garden for archers. There was a koi fish garden, a rock garden, and many other unique, amazing gardens. However, there was one garden that was very magical. It was called the Mystical Garden, and it was in the very back of their property. This was one particular garden that the king and queen oh, did not very take. I'm sorry for interrupting. So this mystical garden was known to have elves and trolls, water trolls and fairies. But they were misfit elves and misfit fairies and misfit water trolls. And so they were known to cast spells and they were also known to take voices and what would they do is they would if anyone entered into their garden the person's voice would be taken away and put in an animal or an insect and if you were lucky enough to find the wizard of the western eagle 
you might be able to get your voice back, but it was not guaranteed. Well, Prince George knew he did not want his voice taken away, so he was very scared of even getting close to the mystical garden. One day, when he was wandering through the rose garden, so as he was wandering near the rose garden, there was a single ant on the ground. And the ant looked at him and said, Excuse me, Prince George, but I have something to say to you. And <laughs> Prince George was like, Whoa, hold it. There's an ant talking to me. And the ant said, Prince George, I have to tell you that I have seen the most beautiful rainbow that I have ever seen. And Prince George said, Really? Where? And he said, it is above the mystical garden. Oh, Prince George said, I can't go over into the mystical garden because, well, I've been told that my voice might be taken away or something might be happening, might happen to me. So, so what, said the ant. The ant really, really said that, you know, those are just rumors. I think it should be fine. And as long as your foot doesn't go into the garden, I'm sure it should be fine. Just at that very moment, the wise eagle came swooping down. Oops, sorry. Swooping down. And he said, Oh, Prince George, I see from above everyone else. I see, I soar among the clouds and I look down. And sometimes I see people cross the um, boundary into the mystical garden. I would be very careful if I were you. I wouldn't even go near to it. The ant said, well, from my perspective, I just see feet. And I'm pretty sure that you can probably go see the rainbow without crossing into the mystical garden. The eagle said, well, I'm not quite sure. From my perspective, I still see rainbows, but if somebody crosses over the mystical line, they could lose their voice. Well, Prince George was curious. He said, thank you so much, owl and ant, for the conversation. I am just going to go take a little bit of a peek, and I'm sure I'll be fine. So he started to wander towards the boundary of the mystical garden. Just at that point, when he looked, he was looking into the garden, he saw little elves and fairies flying around with beautiful wings. He also saw and heard the whispering of leaves he heard almost children's voices laughing, and he also heard the, a babbling brook singing some melodic sounds. Just at that point, when he was thinking, oh, I better turn around, he saw the most magnificent butterfly flying towards him. And just as it was about to get close to him, he reached out his hand and he touched the butterfly. Little did he know that his single finger that touched the butterfly crossed the boundary of the mystical garden. And he said, beautiful. And just at that very point when he was touching the butterfly, his voice floated into the butterfly and he lost his voice. Well, at that very moment, the eagle was soaring up above and watched the whole thing. And the ant, he too watched the whole thing. They both came to his rescue, said, Prince George, Prince George, what have you done? Well, Prince George hadn't said anything. He couldn't say anything. So they walked him back to the, the palace and the ant hopped on the eagle and soared back there. Just at that point, when they walked through into the throne room, the queen and king were sitting on the throne room chairs. And they said, Eagle, Ant, what happened to our son? Well, the ant said, from my perspective, he never stepped foot into the mystical garden. He definitely didn't. But then the eagle said, yes, he did. From my perspective, up in the clouds, I do think that he did step into it. He lost his voice. Something happened. And the ant said, I don't think he actually went in. And... Queen and king did not know what to do. There were two different perspectives. 
And their son stood there without a voice and with tears running down his face. The queen and king looked at each other and said, We don't know what to do and we don't know who to believe, but we will call the wizard of the Western Eagle. They called him to the throne room, and luckily the wizard of the Western Eagle was able to wave his magical wand, and just at that very moment, he, he managed to wish the butterfly into the throne room, and the beautiful butterfly floated right in front of Prince George's face. And Prince George put his finger up to the butterfly, and the butterfly whispered, beautiful, and Prince George touched it on its wing, and beautiful came, the words beautiful came out of Prince George's mouth. The queen and king were elated. They were so happy that the wizard from the Eastern Eagle was able to save their son. And the, the, the eagle and the ant, even though they had different perspectives, were able to help the prince be able to restore his voice and helped advocate for the fact that something had gone wrong. The king and queen were very grateful for the, to the eagle and to the ant. And they were very grateful to the wizard as well. They talked to their son kindly and said, we don't not know if you actually stepped in or if some one of your um, fingers or something went into the mystical boundary. But whatever the case is, you have your voice back now. So be very careful around the mystical garden not to approach it, even if there's a beautiful rainbow above. And at that point, the young Prince George re truly realized the importance of perspective taking. And yet there were two different perspectives from the ant and the eagle. They together were able to advocate and help the young Prince George find his voice again. The end. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. Today, um, the story came from experience I had where there was a group of people who saw another group of people not following the rules. And the people who were offended were a little angry. And if they had actually stopped and listened to the other group and their perspective, then maybe they would have understood why they broke the rules. Anyways, thank you so much for listening to another Empathy Tale. This is Victoria Wolders signing off September 22nd, 2019. It's a Sunday. The end. Thank you so much for joining us today for the story of the ant and the eagle. I hope that today was a delightful story where you can learn about perspective taking. And I hope that you can take some of these ideas into your life, maybe into the digital world by tweeting this out, the story out, or maybe tweeting out something that you have heard or something that resonates with you. Um, also, you might want to think about giving yourself a different perspective the next time you're in a conflict or you're in a situation where it involves you to have to stretch your thinking to think about another how another person thinks. Well, I'm going to let you go. Um, this is Victoria Wolders from uh, mykidslocker.com. I am the Empathy Tales podcast host. Feel free to reach out to me. Love to hear your feedback. And until next time, I hope that you create compassion one story at a time.